Oops. I was going to close all those things prior to starting the stream. I did not. Uh, that's okay. It's all good. Um, oh, something else I should have done. I wasn't thinking about. That's okay. That's the wrong mouse. All right, we're gonna start getting set up here. Still not professional at this yet. Okay, looks like the stream is going. Hooray! Break out the chat so I can see it. Pop out. There we go. Got a chat in case anybody actually stops by. I might have a chance of seeing them. Uh, actually, give me a second. I made a new hidden screen thing so that I can do that for a second while I get set up. Um, cool. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, let me. somebody swing by the stream so the new thing now is I've got uh, music going which is cool so I can close that I can do this I wasn't quite ready for this I should have put discord on this Windows machine that I'm streaming off of I did not do that yet that is okay uh, that happens that's the wrong mouse again one of these days I'll get all this stuff figured out okay so what are we doing um, this is the third in the series of all this stuff. Uh, look at this. I'm going to check this music one second. I think it's okay. That's the wrong. Nope. Nope. Too many, too many devices. Uh, I need to get this where I can see it. Oh, no, I don't. I can do that here. Sorry, folks. Bring it up a little bit. We'll see if that works. Um, if that music's really loud in the chat, let me know. Um, I might have a buddy stop by in a second and let me know, so we'll see. But it's looking at the levels. I, it shouldn't be too loud, but I don't want it to be so soft that it's just a, like only hearing weird stuff in the background. Um, I don't even know if it's worth putting put the background. Um, one grand experiment um, as compared to the grand illusion. Okay, so what are we looking at? Um, this will be the third uh, in a series of these scripts. And basically what we're looking to do is, oh, I should have logged into Amazon already. Um, I've got, bring it back down a little bit because it looks like the meter's getting hot. Um, I've got, uh, at work we use uh, Altrix, um, which is a tool that you basically wind up a bunch of data with, and maybe an ETL tool, I'm not for sure, extract, tan transform, and load. Um, that's probably, it probably is an ETL tool. Um, but we've got this, this tool, and uh, we need the tool to be able to talk to Amazon's web services, uh, the AWS, the S3 buckets, um, which are the storage buckets, and um, uh, Redshift, which is the database. And out of the box, you can do that with basic um, Amazon uh, keys that are an access key and a secret key that you can get. Um, at our organization, we use multi-factor authentication. So in addition to the access key and secret key, there's another thing over here, which is the thing you sometimes see with people on their phone, um, which I'm going to need my phone, um, that you get an application on your phone, and that application every 30 seconds gives you a new six-digit number. Um, and you can see this six-digit number here was one of the ones we used a while ago. Uh, and so that MFA is um, uh, not something that the Alteryx software knows how to deal with. So uh, what I'm doing, so the, like Alteryx has uh, modules or widgets that talk to S3 and then talk to Redshift, the, the, the storage and then the database. Um, 
but we can't have those communications going because we use multi-factor authentication. Alteryx doesn't know how to do multi-factor authentications or we're busted. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm writing some modules myself because you can, inside Alteryx, um, there is a module that you can put Python code inside of and it will run the Python code. So I'm writing Python code to build my own module to take care of the MFA for me. So since Alteryx doesn't do it out of the box, I'm gonna code and make it happen myself. Um, and so the, um, the, the way that I'm doing that and the way that I've kind of migrated to doing that is there's gonna be at least two, um, to, and to start with, there'll be two modules. Uh, this first module basically is the one that's responsible for going, uh, for taking the, um, the secret key and the access key and then your MFA um, token, the six digit number, and there's actually one other thing which is just the ID of the MFA device, takes those four things, sends them to Amazon, and then gets a set of temporary credentials back from Amazon. So script one, which is this one right here, gets session, session tokens, excuse me, does that. And then it stores those tokens. Um, there's a JSON credentials file right here, which I'm not gonna click on because it has live credentials in it. Um, actually, I think they expired a long time ago because the you can when you get the credentials, you can tell how long you want the credentials to be alive for. Uh, and so I, this is, I think, 15 minutes. Um, and I did this hours ago. So like those credentials are actually dead. I'm still not gonna flash them. Um, you uh, Kind of what the credentials look like is like this. It's a JSON file that looks like this. The difference being these numbers go very far, um, or numbers and letters. Uh, so that is in place. I've got the I've got the first thing set up now, and um, and you can see that, now the thing that this doesn't have yet is error handling. So, like if I if I run this right now, I think what's going to happen? Yeah, it it looks like it finished. But it didn't, oh, actually interesting. Let's see, let's actually look at that. I'm gonna flip tie the screen for a second because I wanna see in this JSON file. Hmm, there's data in there, that doesn't make sense. It must not have updated. Um, with response. All right, hang on a second. We're gonna we're gonna do a little troubleshooting here. Uh, so let me bring this back so we can see it. Um, I've got a little button. Uh, I've got a little button. I've got a thing with a bunch of buttons on it that I can actually make that happen transition without me having to do this. This is fun. I'm enjoying the streaming stuff. This is this is cool. This is fun. Uh, so my access key is a known key. That's fine. We can see that. So I just want to see what's actually coming back here. Um, to print that. Right, so the MSCLI, we're gonna go get it. This response shouldn't, it should just send an error back. Um, yeah, so not, some, nothing's coming back here. So I don't understand why this isn't puking because there's nothing there. Because if we give this a valid, where am I going? MFA token. I'm going to MFA tokens. Um, that one's gonna expire in a couple seconds, so we'll give it another couple seconds. So we get a fresh one. Four eight six zero six eight, and if we run this, I'm super confused. Uh, that's the wrong mouse. Serial number. Tau. What am I doing wrong? Is this, is this writing this? No, it's running something completely different. Well, hey, hey, hey. that's what's going on. Why is that not running this? I'm not used to, this is PyCharm, the application I'm using. I, I usually don't use PyCharm. Um, it's new to me and like there's debugging stuff and all this other stuff, so I'm giving it a shot. But like, right now I'm super confused. Rerun that. So the hotkey, I'm using the hotkey to do this. 
Ah, uh, that's going to this file. Ah, okay. Kind of wish it would be the file that you were in. How do I tell it to be this file? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Run. Let's see if we run this. There we go. Okay. Now I'm happier. Um, and this might actually help me not have to do a thing that I thought I was gonna have to do because I. And the in the last one, I was thinking I was gonna have to add in some error handling here because I, when I ran it, it was running this file, which doesn't do anything, instead of this one, and I wasn't seeing these errors pop up. Now I'm seeing the errors pop up. That is good. That is what I want to see because. Yeah, so access denied, so this explodes. Yeah, so I can put a, um, I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I need to figure out how Alteryx works when I load this module in. Um, but basically what we'll have is, in Alteryx, one way or the other, you'll send it your, uh, uh, this number, the six digit number that comes from your token. And, that sounds loud. I don't like that song as much. Hang on, we're gonna move that one. It's a little too much. I don't know how to get through it. There's, there's too many things going on. How do we remove that from a playlist? Let's try that. Remove from playlist. You can't see that. That's what I'm doing. Uh-oh. So you need to add some... Oh, everything broke. Okay. So I actually actually license some music so that I can play this. Uh, just to eat that whole playlist? That's not cool. Oh no, there it is. Eh. All right, now I'm just messing with music. Whatever. Um, so, What's happening right now is it's sending the secret key, the access key, the MFA serial number, which is this, and this token over to Amazon, and Amazon saying this number is, is wrong because it updates every 30 seconds, and it's been more than 30 seconds since I pulled that number, and so Amazon's like, nope, can't get in. Um, so we've got a new number that we can use, and so what came back was it's actually a JSON that we could actually look at and parse, um, but the but the real thing here is this. Well, actually, I don't know where this error like where this error came or if it actually sent back exceptions. Yeah, so I think that's actually happened at, at this level. Um, but that's cool. Whatever. The the big trick that we see here is an error occurred, access denied, and if we come all the way over here, uh, come on, scroll. Um, Multi-factor authentication failed with an invalid MFA, one-time passcode. So that's this, um, which is cool. So we know that that's going to error out if they don't if they don't put it in right, and hopefully it'll actually throw an error. And then with all tricks, we can actually figure out how to pass that error back to the user, saying your MFA token's wrong. Um, and then they can do this, which I've only got a couple seconds. Oh, it went away. Come back. I have many seconds because it just reset. 460, 999. So if I hit Control R now, is it gonna run? Looks like it ran. How about this? We're gonna do this. Just so we can make sure. Because I've got it set up right now. Oh, yeah, so it expired again. Uh, I've got it set up right now where if it passes, before I put this line in, it, it didn't generate anything. And that's why I was confused because it looked like it was working even though it was, I was actually running the wrong file. And it was, it, because I was running the wrong file, I wasn't seeing an error that I was expecting. Um, now I'm running the right file, and I can see it, but this also let me know. So in, I don't know, now? Yeah, so that, that token already expired. Um, oh, by the way, so y'all don't have access to my secret key or my, um, 
access, access key, secret key, account key, whatever the two keys are. Um, so there's no problem, and just to, so folks know, there's no problem with me showing you these pieces of information, um, especially because this changes every 30 seconds. But even if you're out there watching it live, you can't get to it because you don't have the other things. Um, and I need to do this, I need to do this, this and this and this. There we go. Um, and then secondarily, the account I actually have locks down. So uh, when I run this code, it's act in this JSON um, file, JSON credentials. It's actually putting a live set of credentials. Um, I don't, I don't have a good way right now to make this stuff go and test it without actually making the credentials. Like. I, can't think of a way to do that off the top of my head. Um, but the account that I have that this is associated with is sitting in my playground account um, that there's nothing in. And then secondarily, the user in the playground account can't actually access anything even if there was anything there. Um, well, there's one S3 bucket there that we'll talk to in a minute. Um, but just as an FYI, that's, that's how I'm approaching the security of this. In terms of if I accidentally flash those credentials, I'm still safe. Now, if I flash them, I'm going to nuke the account and start again um, just to prevent that. Because um, there's a. Somebody. Like, the only the only real exposure I have is somebody could get in there. Well, actually, they can't do anything. Never mind. It's fine. Because um, the, the account, inside the account, there's the, the user account doesn't have permissions to actually do anything. If I let permissions be like admin permissions, let them in there, somebody could run up a bill on me is basically what it amounts to, but that's not what happened because it doesn't have admin. So just a little background on the security of it. If you're watching this as the third in the series, you will have heard that three times now. Um, so this is working, this is going. Um, if we run it again, it's gonna choke because we don't have credentials. Um, I'm just going to do it one more time for real so that we have a hopefully known good set of credentials in there. Oh, actually, you know what I should do? Uh, no, it's fine. We can do this. So this, this credential will last 15 minutes. I expect it's going to take me longer than that to do the other one. Pardon me. I just ate it a little while ago. Um, and I have a little bit of the burps. Uh, It'll take. It'll probably take me longer, fifteen minutes, to do this other one. But then we'll just come back and build a new credential. So that's cool. Um, so, but I do want to make a new one. Uh, okay. So here's the trick. So I'm. I'm going to run it real quick. That failed. So I'm going to hide the screen for a second because I want to see what it put inside the um, in the JSON credentials file. And the answer is nothing. It's empty. Okay. So. Uh, which is fine. Like it just it choked. This is the JSON credentials file right here. Blah blah. blah. That's from that. So now I also then know what's going to happen to that file. That's fine. That's cool. I don't I don't care. It errored one way or the other. So that's fine. Um, so let me hide that back. I actually didn't have to do that, but that's okay. Back here. Already. Um, so I'm going to run this once. Now, now I need to run it once with valid credentials because I need to populate that the file. Um, music sounds loud. I don't know if the music's a good thing or a bad thing with this. When I'm doing my writing in the mornings, when I'm doing a journal, I'll probably have this going. I don't know if it's a solid thing for this or not. Um, hang on, it's going to have to reset and do it one more time. The wrong mouse out of the way. Eight and six, nine, eight, two. Run them. Cool. All right, I'm gonna hide it one more time, and I'm gonna look and just make sure it really did good credentials in there. You can't see anymore. I can see over here. I see credentials. Huzzah. And bring this back. Oh, cool. Starting to get a hang out of those. Yes. All right, cool. Now what we want to do is also hide the screen because I need to log into Amazon. Which I should have done earlier, but I did not. Let's 
still weirds me out that like, I'm still casting, but like you can't see the screen, but like still kind of freaks me out. Um, see if I got my password right this time. I did. Sometimes it takes me 30 times to get it. So over here. That's the wrong account. I have many an account. Some would even say too many. All right, uh, cool, we can bring... This here, bring this here, bring this here, bring this here. Um, and now we can come back and I can show you what's going on. Uh, so, we got a good set of credentials in there that we can work with. Here's the, um, here's the, the account. Uh, this is my sandboxed account. So I've got a, I've got a personal account and I got a work account. And I have this account, which is Sandbox, which is just com completely separated from the other two um, that I'm using as a demo. So it's the, the purpose for that is like, there's not actually a huge deal if you get into my personal account because it's basically just backup stuff. Um, I definitely don't want you in my work account. Uh, unlikely that anything would get into either of those based off what I'm doing, but this is the safety of just using a completely separate account to not have to mess with it. Um, or not have to worry about it uh, in case somebody gets in. And again, if somebody got the root level access of this, the good news, like, the, it would kind of suck, but the good news is the only thing it could really do on me is run up a bill. Um, I think there are security people out there that might tell me differently, but that's the only thing I can think of. Um, anyways. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to get... Okay. Um... Uh, we want to get the our new script here pushing a file to S3. That's the first thing we want to do, is be able to basically upload. Um, and so we actually had some code, but maybe it's back in name. Yeah. Uh, well, so the first thing we need to do is pull in the JSON uh, to grab our credential stuff. Um, so we can just start working on that. And we're gonna know, so we know we're gonna need JSON. Um, and now we wanna have JSON, actually we can just call it credentials. Credentials. Uh, and so this is where, this is my little grimoire, my notes, developer notebook slash magic book excuse me again json read a json file so this just keeps me so i like i don't do a tremendous amount of coding um so none like very little of this stuff is in my head um so i just put stuff in my notebook that i like if reading a JSON file. I don't remember how to do that. I could easily go and Google that and then I'd have to go through a couple pages and maybe it hits, hit a stack over for the thing and scroll down, like all that. But like, here it is right here. Like, this is how to do it. So um, I give it a file path and then I read, write, and then I've got it. Um, so uh, we're just gonna do this. Um, credential, ah, whatever, it's fine. We, we can name it better, thanks later. Um, Except later will never happen. Oh, JSON. Oh, look at that. That was cool. Um, with open file path read. Is there an as there? Yep. As JSON file. Credentials equals JSON load. JSON file. Uh, so now we're just gonna, oh, actually hang on, let me make sure when I run this, it's actually gonna run the right thing. So I'm gonna do this first. Sending to S3. Now, 
then they got three. Okay, so we're in the right file and it read it because otherwise it would have puked, right? If we had uh, an incorrect character there, it would have exploded saying, hey, you don't have the right thing. Um, so that should mean, um, uh, hey, legal. So what I'm working on is a drop-in replacement that'll go in Alteryx, which is a, a ETL tool. Um, that will let us use um, the Alteryx software with Amazon Web Services using multi-factor authentication. Um, Alteryx out of the box doesn't use MFA, it can't. It can use access keys and secret keys, which we have, but we are in our company we put MFA on top of it. Alteryx doesn't know how to deal with that. So I'm building a module that we can drop into Alteryx that deals with MFA. Uh, hopefully that was a good explanation or an adequate explanation. Um, that's where we're headed. And so I've got I've got the first one that goes and gets this uh, temporary set of credentials and stays it in uh, this JSON credentials file. Uh, and now I'm gonna read that, uh, so that you only, only wanna do that every now and then, like whenever they expire. And then I'm making the second part, which is gonna use those credentials to send files to S3. Um, so that's what this push to S3 is. Uh, and I think, so we had in this, JSON, so we should know the format here. I'm just gonna steal this. Um, and we're gonna go to the access key because that's the one that is most likely to be visible and that's fine. Again, like all this stuff is pretty well locked down. So showing you, normally even the access key you wouldn't wanna show, but for purposes of this demo, I'm fine with it. Um, so hopefully if we do this, we'll actually see an access key show up. There we go, so we got access key. So now we know that this is grabbing the JSON credentials file and pulling out the pieces of JSON that we need. So that's perfect. That lets us know, and then it's in this format. Uh, so in our BB edit, so here's the basic format, right? We've got credentials and inside credentials. We have the secret access, secret token, and access ID. The expiration doesn't matter. We don't care about that. Um, that's just informative. Um, so now what we can do is start going back and actually build the code to push something to S3. Um, and so again, we've got inside my S3 bucket, there's, um, I should have just half of that. That seems interesting and hard. It, it's a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of little pieces that make a kind of a complicated thing. Um, but if you just look at each one of the little pieces, you can kind of get your head around it, which is how I do it. Um, so it's kind of moving down um, as low as you can and into the way of thinking about stuff. Uh, the uh, at, Shoot me any questions about ETL or about MFA or about any of that stuff if you want. I can walk you through, uh, I can walk you through it. Um, it's, it's just, it's just working with code, right? It's just, it's just figuring out how to do a thing in a new environment that you haven't seen before. Um, and that's, and I say just, like, I mean, that is the practice of the thing. And sometimes that's harder, sometimes it's easier. But once you've got your head around it the first time, it's easier to get your head around it the second time. Um, so questions if you got them. Um, the, so what we're doing here, Right, is we, so we've got our credentials now. And now what I need to do is use those credentials to send something to S3. Um, and we actually had a little bit of that code. All right, oh, and actually, so I'm gonna go back into my little book of magic. Pi Bado 3, right to an S3 bucket. Um, and actually, give me one second, that's all cool. But I wanna just check one thing. Uh, yeah, give me one second. I just want to clear a couple things that are fine, but like it's it would be distracting. Um, let me just do that. Cool. Okay. Um, so, putting a string to an S3 bucket, uh, which is what we want to do right now. So. Okay. 
that's not actually a bucket anymore. Um, ACL, public, plain text, put object, S3 research. Oh, okay, so this might be pretty simple. Um, so we're gonna create an S3 resource, but we're actually gonna use this code that we discovered a little while ago, um, because we need to pass to, when we create this S3 resource, which is the, the bottom three, the, um, uh, which is, the, so Amazon Web Services is Amazon. Amazon Web Services makes two things that go underneath it that we talk to, which is the AWS command line tool and then BOTO3 or BOTO3, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, which is the, um, the module up here for, whoops, maybe up here for Python uh, that gives you basically all the things to type into Python and make it happen. So we know we want to create this resource, which we're going to come over here and do. Um, And this probably isn't the best way to do this. I probably should pull stuff out, but we're just going to do this for now. Oh, it didn't work. Why didn't that tab over? Okay, we'll do it this way. So it took me a little while to find the notes, like uh, in my original notes. And actually, I should add this here. Um, or this. or this or MFA. So I'm just taking a note, right? Because I found, I've discovered a new thing and this will keep me from having to look it up later. Uh, we'll just put that there for now. Whoops, we're gonna maybe not do that. Oh, whoops, I'm not in programming thing. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. So the, the Bado3 client talks to, um, or it looks in your home directory for this .aws directory, and then it looks for these, this credentials file. And inside this credentials file, which I'm not gonna open right now because it has active credentials in it, is an access key and a secret key. Um, and so when you normally do a BOTO3 call, it goes and it grabs that access key and that secret key for you, and that's how it makes the communication. Again, that doesn't work for us right now because we're using MFA. Um, and actually I could show, I theoretically, I could show, not theoretically, I could show you the access key and the secret key. Um, and as long as I didn't flash the MFA token to you again, you wouldn't be able to use it because you have to have that multi-factor thing uh, in order for the for the credentials to work. Um, still not gonna show up to you. Um, but what we, what we know is this pulls off the default profile. When you are using the MFA tokens and you get back that formatted JSON file that looks like this, um, in order to use that, when you make this resource call, you have to pass these three parameters as well. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do right here when we make this. And originally we called it JSON response, but it's credentials now. So credentials, credentials, credentials. And what should happen, so I'm just gonna run this um, and hopefully it doesn't explode. Didn't explode, cool. Yeah, so we're still seeing our access key here, which again is fine. Um, and then it's creating an S3 resource. It's not actually trying to do anything with it yet. It's just making it. But I wanted to get that to make sure that, and let's actually test something. Because I, I think what happens is like, if you misspelled this, I think it's gonna blow up. Yeah, it blows up because there's no key in there with all those S's. So now it's work again, and we're working. Cool. Uh, and so now, to write to an S3 bucket, we just do this. So, let me tab this stuff over. Uh, I do not want public read, we're gonna take that away. So our bucket is this bucket. And in case you don't know, um, Amazon S3 buckets are global, so I'm the only one that has aws.pg.sandbox. Um, if anybody else across the Amazon infrastructure or ecosystem tried to make that, it would say that name's already been taken. Um, so one of the things that kind of freaks me out about that is if you see this, now you know that that's my bucket. 
and you could potentially attack me based off that. I'm relying on Amazon security to help with that. Anyways, uh, so we're in, we're going to that bucket and we're going to put an object and we're going to call this object um, so a file, basically. Uh, it, it really, it's just kind of think of blob of bytes. Um, and I'm just going to put it at the root of it and I'm going to call it um, MFA sent file. And then the body can be, this is a text. Cool. Um, or like, yeah, this is a test. That's fine. And then I'm setting it to plain text, which hopefully will make it easier to see it later. So now, with luck, ah, S3 is not defined. Oh, okay. So I called it S3R up here. I, some of these pieces of code I, I stole from other places, and sometimes people call it S3, and some people call it S3R, because there's resources and there's clients, and I think there's maybe some other stuff up there that you can call in Bado. And so I was just prepending it with the R, but I'm just gonna call it S3 right now. Uh, actually, no, I like R better. S3 resource. Um, and now if we run it, cross his fingers. No, something else exploded. Expired token. Oh, the provided token has expired. So it probably took me more than 15 minutes to get that because the session token that we built over here was set to expire in 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. I'm guessing that went. So here is what I think should happen. I'm gonna rerun this script, which is gonna go and get our tokens again. Our, our temporary credentials. And well, let me get the MFA token for it again. And so we're gonna go get that. Eight, four, two, one, four, seven. So we're gonna run this, hopefully. Get MFA, okay, right? So that just updated this JSON file with um, a new active set of uh, MFA style credentials uh, to get into Amazon. This file, this script is now going to use those and try and send it back up to S3. And I think this time it's going to work. Uh, let's see if I can make it go to the right place. Oh, access denied. Oh, okay. I know what's going on there too. So I was talking earlier about how I locked down um, the account so that the account couldn't actually do anything. Uh, that was when I was messing with it earlier, just in case I had uh, passed out. I really should update this. Um, unless I, in case I accidentally flashed uh, user credentials. Um, but so what I'm gonna do is go into groups. This group, let me just bring this up right here, has a policy attached to it. So like, it took me a while to get my head around this. Like you can kind of, there's policies, there's roles, there's users, there's groups, and like they all kind of mush together a little bit. Um, but the simple straightforward way that I'm gonna do this is I've created a policy called, um, it was just SG, what I call it? Nope. So S3 AWS.PGA sandbox read write. So I created this policy, and inside this policy, um, it lets it has an allow statement for listing the bucket and for putting, getting, and deleting. So put stuff in, get it out, delete it. Um, and so this this is that little statement. In order for this user, which is the demo user that I'm that I'm using here, to so right now it has zero permissions. It can't do anything. Um, in order for it to be able to do something, it has to have permissions to do it. So I have that policy attached to this group, which has the same name. Um, so AWS or S3 AWS PGA PG sandbox read write. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add my user in, which is demo command line right here. So now that user has that policy associated with it. And that means, and that policy allows the user that has it associated with it to read, write, or get, put, delete in S3 uh, for that specific bucket. C can't do it for any other bucket. Um, and this is part of the Amazon, um, and lots of good security practice, but the, the Amazon, especially the Amazon recommendation of uh, do the least privilege. So 
I could, there's a, there is a policy in here that's an Amazon created one um, called S3 full access. The, the ones with the yellow containers beside them are Amazon created ones. The ones without it are the ones that I created. So this S3 full access is a little bit different. Um, so it basically says, I want to allow whoever has this policy for anything on S3 to do everything. Uh, action, sorry, Ac action would be anything, in any action on S3. So read, write, put, delete, there's a whole bunch of them actually. Um, and the resource is any S3 object. So if I'd given the, the user that, if I made other S3 buckets, that user would be able to get in and out of those. I don't want that. I want it only to be able to hit the sandbox that we're working on. Um, so we've got the policy locked down. And so that's part, and to just that other one that we saw a second ago, which is this, right? So that's only to this bucket. And then only the read, write, uh, the put, get, delete, and the list. So that's how we're locking this down. And I can't remember if I actually added the user. I did. Um, so I added the user to the group. And that stuff, it took me a while to get my head around that. And I'm still not totally sure that I do because there's also roles that get involved, which is a whole different kind of thing um, that at some point I'll probably actually go into. Not today, excuse me. But now that user has that permission set. So now when we run this, assuming the token has an expired, actually, I'm just going to update the token uh, because I want this to go the first time if, it, if we get it. So we're going to run this, except I've got to get that MFA token. Yeah, one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this batch, well, A, you have to do the MFA stuff now, or we require it, um, but secondarily, the reason I'm doing this split here, I'm going to put that in completely the wrong place, is I only want get MFA credentials. Good. Um, I only want our staff, this sounds a little much, to have to, I don't want them to have to put in the MFA credentials every time. Um, the, there should have been more songs in this playlist. What's going on? I know I put more songs in there than that. I have no idea if these songs are to good. Also, I hope it's not too loud. I hope you can hear it. I hope it's not annoying. I feel like it may be annoying on this, but whatever. Cool. I'll listen to it later. Um, right now, I got to get back. There we go. And get back here. And get back here. And OK. So now, moment of truth. Get to the right thing and run it. Cool. So I didn't see any errors, which means it should have worked. So now, if we go back to Amazon, uh, we get our S3 service. We go in this bucket, MFA sent file. There's our file. So we actually did just send a file to S3. Hooray. It's actually, find it, open, oh, here we go. There it is, this is a test. So there's our file. Um, that was a lot of work to get there. Uh, but it wasn't that much work. It wasn't as much work as the length of time of these videos would make it seem. Uh, just because, again, I'm talking through a bunch of this stuff and trying to make demonstrations about how all this stuff works. Um, but that's cool. So we've got we've got that going. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so some of that too is also we had code already. Why is that? Oh yeah. So we send those. We send that. There we go. Um, and so now I'm going to change this up just a little bit because I want to send. That's fine. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do. And this is going to take a while um, because this is going to, I'm going to have to experiment with a bunch of stuff here. So let me actually stop this one and I'll be right back on the stream, but I want to, I want to hard cut. So I've got the videos split out. Um, so I'm going to stop this one. I'll be back in just a minute. And then what we'll do is jump to the next section. Um, and the next section is going to be messing with Redshift, which I've never done before, really. Um, so that's going to be bumpy. Uh, but uh, I'll be right back in n number of seconds. I don't know. Maybe let's count to 10 or something. I'll be right back.